I am on a quest to prove just how strong the least played class, the Cleric, is in Boldness Gate. And to do that, I have respect every character in my party to be a different type of Cleric and plan to play through the entire game with a full team of God-loving Battle Demons, aka the Army. And to put it in the words of Joecat, bust down Tiamat's door and demand her lunch money. We have just finished Act 1 and ready to step into Act 2. If you want to see how Act 1 went and want to see the events that led up to Act 2, check out the video link in the description below. Now since Act 1 was considerably easy, I thought we should ramp up the difficulty of Act 2 to Tactician, just to give the Amen a real challenge. Now let's not waste any more time in the pleasantries and jump straight in. What's on your mind? So one of the first things I did before we continued on was respect everyone and change their ability improvement score and ensure everybody is left with even numbers. Because I found through the comment section on my previous video that leaving everybody on odd numbers or leaving your ability points on odd numbers doesn't do anything for your character unless you intend on upgrading it later. So I ensured to round everyone down to even numbers. And so in order to do that, I changed Tia, Gale, Will and Carlax Wisdom to 18 and Constitution to 14. And just to throw it out, also ensured Gale was now worshipping Mistra, which obviously just makes makes sense for him. Thanks for pointing that out, uh, comment section. Now, let's continue on this adventure. I decided that I'd go back through the mountain path. I actually hadn't gone through the mountain path on my, my very first run, so I wanted to see what was there. So we ran into Lady Esther, who wanted us to steal a Githyanki egg. And once inside, you could simply purloin an egg. We declined and said that we, we weren't going to let her do this because, you know, this doesn't really line up with, with what clerics do. So, you know, she attacked us. It was five against one because we had Scratch there with us. And, you know, it was a little bit cruel. We ended up using holds on her and, yeah, we, uh, she couldn't do anything and we just, just killed her. We looted her and then continued on our way. We went up this hill which was covered in repulse mines and then we were attacked by these ghouls and a couple of death shepherds. Now at first I was a little bit cocky and I wasn't quite really mentally prepared for the fact that we're playing on tactician and nearly lost the fight straight out of the gates because I wasn't paying attention and wasted a lot of time and concentration spells cancelling each other out and I wasn't really focusing my efforts on attacking and killing the shepherds so they kept reviving the ghouls on top of each other which was really just stripping us down of our spell slots. I even messed up and got Carla killed. Luckily, spirit weapons were able to save the day, and I had to use my first scroll to revive Carla and bring her back to life. So I realize now that Tactician was going to be a lot harder than what I was used to, so couldn't afford to make any silly mistakes like this again. Next, we explored some more, and I ran into Elminster, who told Gal Mistra's plan for him. I'm here on behalf of Mistra. The message and the charge I bring you which pretty much meant that he had to go nuclear and take out the absolute. Next, we ventured forth and found this lift. However, instead of taking the lift across the way, I decided to go underneath it, you know, just in case there was any cool loot to find along the way. But unfortunately, we found nothing but this really annoying bird. The drunk lizards they eat aren't hard to catch. We then continued into the church where the Githyanki had established their crash. Instead of going through the front door though, we crept around the side and found a horde of drunk kobolds. With the upper hand, we attacked. Now our intention was to use some fire and attack this barrel and cause an explosion. However, there was actually a kobold inside of it, which unfortunately woke everyone up and started the attack. However, with spear weapons and lots and lots of fire, we managed to clean them up and move on. And we continued to explore the outside of the churches and found our way in. We walked into this room to find it full of not so invisible cats. Now thinking Tyr might be able to talk to them, I walked in, however, they ended up attacking us. Now this was an interesting fight because they did strange things when we used magic, like spawn other big cats. Now I initially thought it might not be best to use magic, but the damage was kind of already done. The big cats were already spawned and I really needed to use some AoE magic to take out the numbers. Thankfully, we managed to take them out pretty easily, and then we harvested all their tails. Sorry, cats. We continued through the church and made our way inside. We walked into the Githyanki camp, and we stopped at the door. State your purpose quickly. Luckily, we were able to convince them that we're friendly, and they let us through. Very well. Perhaps Inquisitor Wawargaz could use the aid of an adventurer. We witnessed their training exercise and decided to accept their challenge. Our opponent surrendered before the fight, but we had to stab him anyway though we did let him live. We continued to explore and met the Githyanki scientist slash healer, Gustil. We told her about our tadpoles, and she said she could remove them if we sat in this janky thing. It waits for something. When we sat in the machine, it started to do its work, but things were not looking very good for Tia. I've got a bad feeling about this. And then he couldn't escape. However, the chair suddenly exploded, thanks to the stranger. Then we convinced Gustil we couldn't remember anything at all, and then she leaves us alone. But I have no use for gibbering idiots. Leave me. 
Next, we met with a Githyanki Kithrak Berizin, who was really sass on us about the artifact. Do you have it? So we managed to dodge the conversation. I wasn't too sure if we could survive a fight against all the Gith in this building. So we promptly left and decided to start our journey into the Shadow Cursed Lands. When we first stepped through, we were greeted by a goblin who believed us to be true souls and we were meant to be guided through the shadows. With torches in hand, we ventured into the darkness and met with the other absolute cultists. Apparently, we were meant to have something to summon the guide, which Mithara had on her. Did you bring the liar? But honestly, I didn't really know what she was talking about, so we decided to leave it for the inn. Before going there, I knew it would be best to meet with the Harpers who were out on patrol, so we found them and helped them fight off the shadows. After helping the Harpers with the shadows, they led us into the inn where Jahira greeted us. She was very sus on us, so we were forced to tell our story. And with Mole's help, we'll let in. He's the one who saved us! After Karlak fangirled, we proceeded to sell a lot of stuff and buy everyone some new equipment and potions, plus some purple dye for Gale's armor. Gotta keep him fashionable. We long rested where we were met with Mizora, who asked you to rescue an asset from Moonrise Towers. A devil, and a powerful one at that. So we convinced her to release Will of his contract, if we do. Halston also told us a bit about the boy named Thanyu who was linked with the Shadow Curse. We then looted every piece of food and alcohol I could find in the inn, because as you know, we need as much food as possible on tactician long rests. We also ran into Raphael, who was playing chess with Mole, and had an unusual tendency to be invisible during the dialogue. After speaking with Jahiro, we went upstairs to talk to Isabel. Then Marcus appeared. We decided to protect our new cleric friend, and the combat started. Now, I knew this was going to be a tough fight, as I struggled it with it in my first run. Although you can't necessarily fail it, uh, I wanted to make sure that we protected Isabel. However, we did have one major problem. I actually didn't pay attention to the new armor that I just bought to Gale, uh, and I didn't realize he couldn't use it effectively, which prevented him from using magic. So he had to embrace his inner wrestler and fight in his underpants. Luckily, they were pretty fashionable. Now, the ability to heal everyone with Mass Healing Word was very useful at keeping Isabel alive, and we made great use of Spirit Weapons and Spirit Guardians. By the end of the first round, Marcus was on half health, so we're looking pretty good. On the next round, we used Turn Undead and all the Spirit Guardians to take out most of the ghouls that were up on the upper floor, threatening Isabel's life, which pretty much left Marcus on his own, so we all beat down on him. And then finished off the remaining flying terrors who were littered throughout the end. After that fight, I immediately got Gale's old armor back and dyed it the same purple because, you know, gotta keep him fashionable. And then we upgraded Karlak's heart, which allowed her and Tear to hug. Ah, oh, so sweet. That night, though, we were met with Celateris Fell again, who wished us to kill Isabel. Now, I for sure did not want to do that, so we told him to beat it. Who knows who you might kill next? If you do not satisfy your urge. Next, it was time for us to ambush the absolute cultists who were meant to guide us earlier. I went separately to the Harpers at first to see what I could do to disadvantage them. However, they weren't there for us to engage with. But I did realize that the object that we were meant to have was a liar that Minthara had on it. And I had this in camp storage. I tried playing it at the location that we were meant to call the Guardian, but it no longer worked. So I figured the Absolutists are probably already gone. So we went back to the ambush location and laid in wait. Once the convoy had appeared, I revealed myself to them and convinced them to drop the lantern. Is your will who can have it? And immediately signaled the ambush. Cal used Misty Step to quickly get in there and pick up the lantern, and then we make quick work of the absolute cultists. However, the spider guy was quite annoying. We had to wait for his protection to go away before we could hit him, or hit him with AoE attacks. Unfortunately, he was able to kill Karlak, making this her second death, but we used Revive Pie to get her back into the fight, then proceeded to beat down on him. We released the pixie and got her blessing to enter the deeper area of the curse. And strangely, Will leveled up before everyone else. For his level 7, we made sure to give him Guardians of Faith, which basically will add another ally into the battlefield. Now, before we continue deeper into the Cursed Land, I wanted to make sure I had explored everywhere in the ruined battlefield. So we went into this abandoned house, and with Scratch assistance, we uncovered some buried treasure, and we continued to go under the house where we found the group of mean locks. I tried to sneak up on them to get the advantage, but Scratch gave us away, so we ended up having to fight them. After the fight, the remainder of the party leveled up and ensured everyone had access to Guardian of Faith. After that, we continued to explore, and I realized that I was down to one of my last lock picks so i was really starting to get worried about lock all these lock chests that we're finding basically one of the downsides of not having a rogue or anyone with high decks in your party this path led us to the cellar underneath the inn and as you would expect it was filled to the brim with booze this will come in handy later once we had finished there we went back to the inn and found Councillor floric who was going to head back to boulder's gate and ask for help we also found this guy who was sleep singing and knew something about thaniel so we went and got halson apparently we needed something further to help wake him up which was located at the house of healing we need it well done 
We've set her to the ruined battlefield once more and fought these two groups of shadow cursed roots, which didn't stand much of a chance against Gale's fireballs. We also long rested and Will wanted to dance with Tears. You know, Tears not really that interested in Will, so we had to witness the most gut-wrenching rejections I have ever seen. Oh. I mean, yes, of course. The sun only rests for so long. Honestly, I have felt so bad for Will. We spoke to he who was, who asked us to find this journal. Perhaps this one could assist us. Then we fought the ever annoying measles who like to teleport people all over the place. Luckily, Tyr could see them because, you know, he's invisible eye thingy. So that allowed us to have first strike, which gave us a huge advantage. Plus, Guardians of Faith made it hard for them to get the leash on us. They did manage to make off with Gale, so we chased them down and finished them off. Next, we crossed the bridge and went into the Toll House and ran into Geringoth Thorn. I somehow missed this on my first run, so I was actually quite interested to see how this would go out. We started the conversation with her, but that didn't really go any way positive, so we started the fight. Now, I was actually quite worried because she has a substantial amount of health, and she did kill Tia in her very first turn and like literally just wiped him out. Harlech revived Tia with a scroll and Gale banished her so we could gather our strength again. Now, I thought that maybe the safe had something to do with the curse, but it turns out it only contained a single piece of gold, so that was a bit of a dead end. Geringoth returned and killed Tyr again and brought all the skulls in close up. That made me realize that the skulls probably had something to do with her curse. So we'd use Turn of Undead, AoE spells and spirit weapons to take them down as quickly as we could. After killing them all, her health had dropped significantly. So I threw absolutely everything I had at her. And then we managed to defeat her. Although Tyr didn't really do too much for us in this fight. Afterwards, we found the shield which worked perfectly with Tyr's spell, Shalala. Thank you, YouTube comment section. If you've enjoyed this video so far, I'd appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this by me, then subscribe to the channel. So I also remembered that I should probably go find Oliver. So we went to his house on the hill and played hide and seek. Unfortunately, we lost the game, but we did beat his shadow family anyway. With that squared away, we went to the bar to find Thizzabald Thorn. Now we refused to participate in his drinking game and decided to fight him instead. Will's core lightning and spirit guardians did some massive work on him. So we beat him pretty easily. After finishing off the remaining undead, we continued to the House of Healing. Along the way, we ran into Arabella, who was looking for her parents. We agreed to find them and went into the hospital, where we found Arabella's parents dead. It's Arabella's father. We continued inside to witness this doctor performing some surgery. Now on my previous run, I actually didn't see this dialogue option, as I attacked straight away. So I was quite interested to see how this would go. Now, after some dialogue, he told us that he wanted to experiment on us. But luckily being clerics, we knew a little bit about Sharon Law, so he wanted the sisters to do some experimenting on us. We rolled a nat 20 and convinced him that he was the only one the sisters could perform their experiments on, as he was the only true worshipper of Shara in the room. Which led us to this scene. Come sisters, soothe me. Honestly, was not expecting that at all. We continued up the hill to the Temple of Shah. Before entering, Raphael appeared and asked us to kill the demon inside. We agreed since we were going in there anyway. Once inside and after we managed to work out this very easily puzzle, we ran into this door and my lack of lockpicks um, was really starting to stand out. So we tried to find other methods to get us through. However, Tyr accidentally stood on the trap which set off all this shadow around us, which was slowly killing us. After some time fumbling through the shadows, we managed to block off the vents which allowed us to live a little bit longer, while everyone who could lowered the four lamps in the corners which seemed to make the fog disappear. So after this we disarmed all the traps so this wouldn't happen again. Now I've spent too much time trying to work this out at this point, so I used one of Gale's fireballs to blow up the door. In the caves outside the temple, Tyr spotted the cloak with his eye, so we attacked on it giving us the advantage and quickly killed it and moved on. We busted down the doors to the next room and found a swarm of rats surrounding a Shah shrine. Tia talked to one of them and found out they were quite mean, so we attacked them. There were quite a few, but you know, spirit guardians pretty much exterminated that rat problem. Another one appeared and begged us for forgiveness and revealed to us a secret cache. We continued on and was greeted by these undead who believed us to be true souls. Before we could meet with their master, we were attacked by Sharon ghosts. Now in this fight, these portals appear, which was super easy to destroy with Guiding Bolt. Though something strange was happening. Every time Tia attacked one of the Sharon ghosts, he would take damage too, which did eventually knock him down. 
After we defeated them, we met with Balthazar, who commanded us to find the Night Song. Clear the path for me by blade, cunning, or whatever it takes. We agreed to, with the intention to betray him, of course. We pressed on deeper into the temple and saw the rats again. Now, I thought they were might have been leading us to the secret stash that we mentioned before, but apparently we followed them into their den, which pissed them right off. So we ended up having to fight a horde of rats. Now, of course, this was pretty easy. All the rats had one health and we had spirit guardians. All we had to do was walk around in circles and they would pretty much just die. After killing them, this Sharon Dark Justicia spawned. Apparently, he was divided into many, many rats. He wasn't very happy about being human again, so he wanted to find us. After we killed him, we continued to explore the ruins. Now, I needed to top up on a long rest, so I took this opportunity to tell Arabella about her parents. She wasn't very happy to hear about this. Get away from me! Go! Next, we went deeper into the ruins and found the demon and his followers. We also found his pet displacer. Now, I did hear that you could turn the displacer against the demon if you went through the right dialogue with it. Now, and after licking the spider, Gail wasn't too pleased about witnessing that. Hmm. If what is happening is what I think is happening, and it's because you licked a dead spider, the time might just have come when you and I should split ways. We learned that the displacer was being charmed. We revealed this information to it, but failed the roll and it attacked us initiating combat. This turned out to be one of the hardest fights so far. The displacer was hard fight in itself, but when we had to fight it before the demon Yugo that came into the fight. Now I was able to use Tears Spike Overgrowth to block the way in which luckily stopped Yuga from coming through and a lot of his Merigon followers. This allowed us to bite the Displacer without too much of a problem. The Displacer was tough and at one point did knock down Will and teleported him into the spike growth, which pretty much killed him. At this point, I thought it'd be best that we use potions of speed on Tyr and Gale, as I knew things were not looking very good for us. After some time, we managed to defeat the Displacer of the Beast since it tried attacking and teleporting the Guardian of Faith, what an idiot, which melted it, but we were not quite out of the woods yet. Yugo was still there and not passing the spike growth and become distracted by the Guardian of Faith, allowing us to kill most of the remaining Merigons. Luckily, most of them had tried walking through the spike growth, which halved their health, making it very easy for us to kill them. However, at this point, we we're not doing too well and we we're running very, very low on spell slots. We managed to revive Will and then start taking hot shots at Yugo. He did eventually jump over the spike growth and began to wreak havoc. He incapacitated Gale in one attack and finished Will off again. We used Mass Healing Word to revive Gale and healed Karlak and Tyr once more. But on his next turn, Yugia knocked down Gale again. We revived Will once more and had Karlak get up close and personal. Will was knocked down again, followed by Karlak, leaving Tyr the only one alive. Things were not looking very good, and Yuga still had a quarter health left. Luckily, there were still two spirit weapons alive. One absorbed an attack, which probably saved Tyr from being targeted. The other one landed a crit on Yuga, bringing him down to 17 health. This caused Yuga to scatter the ground with explosives. Tyr shot the explosives, which brought Yuga down to 5 health, and to keep him safe, we used a potion of invincibility. While Tyr was invisible, Yuga did finish Will and Karlak off. Thankfully, because Tyr was invisible, he was able to get the advantage and managed to kill Yuga. Very, very stressful. After looting everyone, we continued to complete the three gauntlet trials, plus fought the Sharon ghosts in the library. And after that fight, we turned to level eight, giving us another feat. Now I gave each member a different feat, just to mix it up a little bit and experiment with different feats I hadn't used before. But here I gave him Warcaster, Gale, I gave him Magic Initiate, Wizard, you know, to line up with his wizarding origins. Halak, I gave Martial Adept, which I felt worked well with her War Domain background. And Will got Sentinel. At this point, we had all of the orbs and we could use the Lift of the Send down further into the ruins and into the waters where the night song is. After we emerged, Balthazar appeared and we followed him down. Now I know this to be one of the most challenging fights in the game. In my first run it took me several attempts because they kept pushing my party into the abyss. So let's see how we go with a full party of clerics. Your patron will not hear your prayers when I add you to my undying retinue, godling. So I managed to get most of the party in the middle with Misty Step and managed to turn Balthasar away, which kept us safe from him for a couple of terms. However, Gal was pushed off by a skeleton, though he had to be revived, only to be put to sleep and incapacitated again. Will was able to make good use of Core Lining, Shatter and Ice Storm, taking out large numbers of enemies. While Tyr and Karlak used Turn Undead and Spirit Guardians to take out the undead who had gathered in the middle of the map. Without too much difficulty, we beat Balthasar and the Undead. Although I really wish Gale could have had more impact in this fight, especially because he has a huge array of AoE spells. But oh well, we did manage to succeed. Once Balthasar was defeated, we released Nightsong, who charged towards the Moonrise Towers. When we exited the temple, Shadowheart confronted us, and she was not 
Poppy. Mainly because we did all of this without her in the party and she wasn't very happy about missing out. So ultimately she left the party, which was a little bit sad because you know, we like Shadow Heart. You would be wise to forget me. I can only hope I one day forget you. So next up, it was time to charge in the Moonrise Towers, but before I did, I wanted to make sure I squared a few things off. We gave He Who Knows the journal and he performed his ritual on the dead halfling. During the ritual, we forgave her, which he wasn't really too happy about, so he attacked us. After beating him, I wanted to take the loot we found from Malice Thorn to Halson. When we got to the inn, we were greeted by Isabel. At this point, the urge was really trying to get us to kill her, but Tyr resisted the urge, and we continued to wake up Art Color, who informed us about Thaniel being alive. Whenever I saw Thaniel, I always smelled lavender. At this point, I needed a long rest, and Celeterus Fell appeared. It wasn't very approving that we didn't kill Isabel, and he said that while we slept, we were going to kill Will, who Celeterus thought to be Tia's favorite companion. Technically, it would have been Shadowheart, but since, since she left us, so I guess Will was second pick, despite us heartlessly rejecting his advances. I do not doubt you will act with a decorum befitting one of your rank. A good night, sweet lord. After Celeterus fell left, the urge really wanted us to kill Will, but we managed to resist the urge and do some great dice rolls and woke him up. We explained to Will everything that was happening and he, he was very happy to help us. He tied us up when we passed out and we managed to resist the urge. But does this mean that we've bested the urge? I guess we will see. All control is gone. When we woke, we had to protect Halston as he fetched that manual from the dark shadowy area. I still don't quite understand it. Now this was pretty easy. We just got Gale to use a firewall on this side of the map and pretty much all the enemies would run straight into it and burn themselves alive. Next I explored a little bit more and made my way into the House of Healing's morgue. Fought the zombies inside and used some poison resist potions, misty step and scrolls of flying to fly down to the pit where we were attacked by some ooze and some armor. We pressed on after a long rest and found this shack by the water where we were ambushed by a large group of cursed Kuatoa. Thanks to all the AoE spells that we have, we made very quick work of them all. We then explored the Mason Guild and fought the shadows in the secret cellars underneath. Now it was finally time to charge into Moonrise Towers. So after looting all the bodies on the way in, we charged in through the front door with all the harpers. At the start of the battle, Gale set up a wall of fire and Tyr set up his spike growth to hurt any enemies that tried to advance on us. However, it had a bit of the opposite effect as the harpers would charge into the fire and to the spike growth themselves, which ended up killing a couple of them. We summoned spirit weapons, which helped hanked a lot of the attacks and used our own ranged spells to thin out the crowds before eventually turning off the wall of fire and spike growth and charging in ourselves. Now this fight did take some time because there were quite a lot of enemies in the room, but we did eventually whittle down their numbers to this one person and we all converged on her. Next, I wanted to explore and gather as much resources as possible. I made the mistake of heading downstairs to be jumped on by a large group of undead. I was very low on spell slots at this point, so it was, it was a very risky fight, especially since the enemies kept spawning more undead and they had fireball, which pretty much decimated us. However, we did eventually manage to beat them, although we were knocked down a couple of times. After this fight, I had to long rest because I could not fight Ketherick with no spell slots. When we long rested, we were invited to sit with Gale, which turned out to be a very platonic yet insightful night. After this long rest, we were finally ready to fight Ketherick. On the way up, we made short work of the cultists at the top of the tower, plus the mimic, which left us all at level nine. Now we had some awesome spells like mass healing word, flame strike, wall of stone, and insect plague. We charged to the top to fight Ketherick. Bow, you dog. I used Will and Carlite to misty step the Ketherick and keep him busy while Gale and Tyr fought everyone else. Once the undead were taken care of, the rest of the party collapsed on Ketherick, forcing him to flee with a massive tentacle. We then dived down the tower where the tentacle came from. We killed and freed Chop from his servitude and freed us from the cage. We fought the Death Shepherds and groups of Winged Horrors. Gale's flame wall was perfect here, allowing us to create a choke point, pretty much damaging anyone who tried to get anywhere near us. Most of the zombies died as they tried to walk through the flame wall. Once they were defeated, we set up the same Zevalor and released the Mind Flayers at the same time. Now, this was a big mistake. The Mind Flayers almost completely decimated us with their AoE attacks. Honestly, this fight was so tough and it had it not been for Zevlor, we probably would have died here. With Zevlor rescued, we saved Mizora, then found a small group of cultists. Now I wanted to get the advantage on them, so we used Fireball and caught them by surprise. After blowing them up, it turns out they had a lot to do with the Dark Urge. It turns out Tyr was once a cultist. He was attacked by someone and then healed by the one he just helped kill. So there's still a lot of unanswered questions. It was now time to confront Ketherick one last time. We stopped Gale from going nuclear and started the fight. 
I'll stand down. Before they knew we were here, we snuck in. I had Gale, Tia, and Karlak hide up on the side ledge, and while Will turned invisible to release Night Song, Aelin. Once she was free, we began our assault. Now stage one was pretty easy. Using our new AoE spells, we got past the first fight pretty simply. Once Ketherick had begun Merkel's projection, Karlak had a hard time staying alive as she kept getting targeted every time she was healed. Gale and Tia spent most of the fight on the ledge throwing fireballs and guiding bolts at Merkel, and Will's cold lightning did some massive damage. Gale and Tia eventually had to jump down to Merkel as he tried calling his undead to heal him. However, before they could, Tia used turn undead which stopped them in their tracks. And with one last epic attack from Karlak, Merkel was defeated. Well done, everybody. With Ketherick defeated, we caught up with everyone and witnessed Isabel and Aelin's reunion. Now, we had one last thing to do before we continued. We had to go and see Oliver and convince him to reunite with Daniel. We had to fight some more shades, but you know, this was pretty easy compared to killing a god. Just... So that basically wraps up Act 2. And I gotta say, it's getting pretty easy. Having a lot of AoE spells under our belt means that we can take out a lot of enemies very quickly. We played Act 2 on Tactician, and although my team has died a few times, I haven't had a full party wipe requiring a reload just yet. The clerics with their wide array of spells, AOE spells and like just mass damaging spells is like just proving to be extremely useful. Probably the main reason why we're doing so much is just user error. Now I'm really excited to see how they do in Act 3 and I hope you guys are too. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you for Act 3.